Okay, so this is a little bit of a change of pace. I wanted to, instead of just talking about nootropic substances all the time, uh, maybe I could start making some videos on more general concepts and uh, help you learn some of the neurology and stuff that underlies a lot of this so you can think about this stuff more on your own. And uh, I wanted to get my feet wet with that idea by doing this quickie on um, nootropic factors. Or, I'm sorry, neurotrophic factors. Uh, these are things like BDNF or NGF. You might have heard about these. These are getting talked about a lot in the nootropics community right now. And there are some other ones too. And they're basically just chemicals that are involved in maintaining the health of neurons, but also the, the proliferation of them for, you know, neurogenesis and uh, not even necessarily even growing new brain cells, but uh, helping the axons to develop, forming new synapses. It's involved in all of those. So uh, these are actually uh, a specific class of drugs, a much larger category of, I'm sorry, chemicals that are part of a much larger category of chemicals that are involved in the development of the brain and the plasticity of it and forming a new synapses and getting rid of synapses, yada, yada, yada. There's the neurotransmitters. We all know what those are. And there's a lot of these other chemicals that are pretty much just as important for the functioning of the brain. And I don't want to leave those neglected either. So the, nootropic fac the neurotrophic factors are uh, getting a lot of attention. One reason, particularly uh, BDNF, and BDNF is getting implicated a lot in depression now, uh, particularly in the hippocampus. You know, with long-term stress, you can get damage in the hippocampus. Uh, it seems that maybe that's behind a lot of depression when you get some neurogenesis going again in, in the hippocampus. It, uh, well, it, it basically, um, I want to use the word cure. I guess basically cure uh, the depression. Uh, I don't know. I, th I think it's kind of like a, a word that's frowned upon a lot in the medical community, but... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, you get the gist. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm just being really precise. Um, so, BDNF uh, seems to be really central in uh, the treatment of depression. Uh, so, uh, that's why that's getting a lot of attention. And it, seems, it turns out there's a lot of things that work on BDNF, uh, nootropics-wise. I did a video on CMAX. That, 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 for example, um, I think it raises BDNF a little bit, but it also upregulates some of the receptors for it. It is just like neurotransmitters where, you know, you have uh, receptors, and you have various receptors. There's uh, TRKB, I think, maybe, is the one that... Uh, I think I said it on the video. I can't remember which one it was because there's different ones. I think it's TRKB that it upregulates, but there's different TRKs. These are all just different receptors for you know, BDNF, so it's like the neurotransmitters. They're like you know, the, the thing can do different things uh, depending on what receptors are available, and different cell populations are more receptive to different um, neurotrophic factors. And it's actually not just neurons. Uh, some of these, uh, I know in particular NGF is used in a lot of other types of cells for different things, so they're pretty interesting. Uh, I know NGF, another example of something that it's, uh, it's good for is uh, the proliferation of certain cells in the pancreas. So, uh, again, uh, I guess, you know, biology we find these same tools are used over in a lot of different ways. It's just the nature of evolution, you know, you're gonna use what's most readily available. It works in those steps, you know. It... So, that's a little bit on nootropic factors. Uh, but anyway, people get obsessed with this and they wanna boost BDNF like crazy and 
I don't know if that's always a good idea because there is all these chemicals and uh, <clears throat> they work in sort of a finely tuned balance. But there's not just these, there's some chemicals uh, produced by oligodendrocytes, which are a form of glial cell in the adult brain, and they actually block the action of some of these neurotrophic factors. So we actually have mechanisms to work against them, and we have all these other chemicals that are involved in the physical structure and the connectivity of the brain. I think we need to be weary of manually boosting BDNF off the charts and not paying attention to these other things. I kind of look uh, at it as a computer. I, I look at it like a, with computers, you know. If I can make an analogy with computers, it's kind of like, um, you know, there's some things that are obvious that you can do. There's like drop-down menus and, and whatnot. Or you could get... Uh, ballsy with it and you can open up the registry or the lower level stuff and you can kind of go under the hood you have more power that way but you can mess a lot of stuff up too and it's no different with the brain so if you really want to raise bdnf and do something that we know is good for depression you might just want to go for a jog a few times a week because that'll raise bdnf we know it's good for depression for example among many other things and uh, so you could do that, and that's kind of using, that's kind of like a higher level thing. You know, the, the, all the lower level machinery is going to fall into place because, you know, it's evolved to, we evolved for that to, to, to kick in naturally when we run. When you're using pharmaceutical means to just boost BDNF, you're doing it very directly, and you, you, who knows what other parts of the whole system you're just ignoring that maybe need to be in the place to help keep the action of the BDNF in control or whatnot. So these are all just things to think about. I don't know in particular what kind of a danger this poses, but we are kind of, in this hobby, we're kind of at the forefront of science and we're experimenting with some compounds that are not real well known. So taking risks is something that is good. And, you know, we have to be able to take them. But I think you have to know what it is you're getting into. And it's just I want people to be informed that they're going to make these choices. So, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know if it's like going to give you like tumors. But, you know, just stuff to think about. As always, do your own research. Uh, that's the role these neurotrophic factors play. So, there you go. Now you have a little something to think about. It's a starting place. Maybe I gave you some terms to look up uh, if, if you uh, want to do your own Googling. So, I think that's everything I wanted to say about neurotrophic factors. And, um, I'm going to have a lot more to say about them because they are getting talked about a lot and there's a lot of nootropics out there which are purported to work in some way on these uh, particular chemical systems. So have fun as always and do your own research and thanks for watching.